children. All right. Arm wrestling. Picking the side of the table. You, you got a favorite side. I got a favorite side. I'm pretty sure that we all have the same favorite side. What we're here to talk about is, does the side of the table actually matter? First, we got to name the sides of the table. Try to come up with a couple of different You can't use right side or left side because it depends where you're looking at. You could use the audience version, but this is what we just decided. We are going to call it buckle side and non-buckle side. Left-handed match. The buckle side is just as you'd expect to be the side that if you were in the strap, you're going to have the buckle on, but even without the strap, we're still going to call it the buckle side. The back of your hand is facing the ref. It's the buckle side. So on a left-handed match, this fella here in the gray shirt, left his, the back of his hand is facing the ref. So he's on the buckle side. Over here in a right-handed match, the guy in the gray shirt is not on the buckle side. This fella in the black shirt, the back of his hand is facing the ref. The buckle side is where the back of your hand faces the referee. So what we did is analyzed all the matches in the East First West events to date. East First West, one, two, three, and four. 186 matches. I watched every single one of them, recorded the results. But then two, I was worried about getting maybe getting some error. So I went back and audited about 70% of the matches to make sure the data was accurate. Why do we use in the East First West events? One, they're accessible. Here's the links. Anybody can go watch them. They're high-level pullers. So you don't have amateurs trying funny things, messing up your data. This is, we're only interested in professional level arm wrestling, high level pullers. East first West events have high level referees. Some of these events have left-handed matches in them. Some of them also have women's matches. Some of them also have left-handed women matches. Wide selection of arm wrestlers. So arm wrestlers from all over the world. So a lot of different styles and they are super matches. Super matches are better at representing the effects in arm wrestling because when you're in a tournament, you might only see your opponent once, you get that one and done phenomena, you make a bad mistake, you, you're slow off go, so all that stuff can affect the win or lose, the win or lose results of a tournament. But in a super match, you can adjust, you can regrip, so it gets down to pure arm wrestling. Let's look at the results. All right, East first, West one, free grip. Free grip is when the two arm wrestlers get their own grip. They're not, they're not in the straps, they're not set by the ref. No difference in the side, seven to seven. East versus West two, no difference. Look, there's a difference of one here, but you can't have both sides win in 10.5 matches. So even, even, nine to five, there's a slight difference there. Six to 10, and there's another difference. And the buckle won more at East first West three. The buckle lost more at East first West four. So... They're kind of they're kind of evening out. When we got to the very end, look at that, thirty-two to thirty-three. When you're getting your own, when you're getting your free grip, a natural grip, the buckle side made no difference in what is the sixty-five matches. No effect on the table side. Pick your favorite side. Don't worry about it. It's going to all even out in the end. Referees grip. Uh, East first one. The buckle. The buckle won every single one. Then we got even, then there is a shift to three to seven, another even, because once again, it can't be 2.5 on either side. So difference of two, is this three to seven or this 11 to 13 significant? We could apply statistical tools to this. There's a, there's a tool called the chi-square test. It would tell you if this two matches out of 24 is significant, but you can in your head, um, think about flipping a coin, 11, 11 heads and 13 tails. So we'll talk about more statistics later. Let's get to the straps because it's always the buckle. People seem to think the buckle matters. East first West one, the buckle lost two more, five, yeah. The buckle lost two more times than it won. East first West two, dead even. East first West three, dead even. East first West four, one, two more. Look at that. Two more wins. Two more losses. In the end, the buckle in the straps did not matter because this can't be 26.5 to 26.5. It has to be a one match difference. And, oh, but by and large, the buckle won more. <laughs> I'm going to beat that dead horse. The buckle doesn't matter. I'm telling you, it just doesn't matter. Referees, grip, and the straps. Even, even, even. 
Ooh, a difference of four. Once again, we could pull our old friend the chi-square test out, but you really wouldn't apply it in these little sample cases because there's a rule of thumb that you don't apply these statistical tools until you get a sample size of 30. Before you guys burn me up in the comments, yes, there are certain conditions where you can deal with smaller sample sizes. They're usually pretty controlled conditions and they're usually pretty well-established populations. And all non-strat matches. The buckle won 43, the buckle lost 46. Buckle side, buckle side wins 43 to 46, difference of three. All strat matches, the buckle lost three more times again. And in all matches, 96 to 90. So we're talking six out of 186, and we're talking three out of 97, and we're talking three out of 89. A little more than 3%-ish. Um, what I'm saying is, is the buckle side of the table does, I'm going to make two broad-based um statements here. I don't think you can find a significant difference in the buckle side of the table side, whether you're in the strap or not. We're talking about 3%, which is like one match out of 33. Uh, most people don't even arm wrestle 33 times in a year. That's like, that's like four tournaments or six super matches. By and large, the side of the table and the side and the, the buckle does not affect professional level arm wrestling. So you don't have to worry about it. Get your favorite side. Don't fret if you don't. Um, Here's an interesting thought. What if the difference in the strap matches was due solely to the side of the table and had nothing to do with the buckle or the strap? The difference in the buckle side non-strap matches is very similar to the difference in the strap match buckle side almost as if strap in the buckle has nothing to do with it and it's just table side please again apply the statistical tools to this data if you want collect the data yourself verify it i plan to keep adding to this because i got a very sneaking suspicion the bigger these numbers get the closer to even we get but i'm gonna do something a little more fun to illustrate just how random this stuff is so, non-strap matches was 89 matches. I think it came out with a difference of three. 89 pennies. We're going to pour them out, count heads versus tails, see if we get anything close to the difference of three that we got in the East versus West matches. Oh. Beer! Ah. Uh. Now we can do bro science. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, let's separate these babies. which is what we were trying to get to. So round one, 37 to 52. <laughs>
45. Heads. 45. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52. 52 again! That's, that's the second time in a row. 45 to 52. The first time... We had a difference of 13, we had a difference of 15. This time we have a difference of five, seven. Wait. Difference of 10. And it equals 186. All right. Now. 